So now that we have this nice level surface here, we're going to do some type of swooping drop or inversion. So let's go back into Force Vector Designer and for this we're going to turn the time up a little bit and I'll explain why we're going to do that in a sec. But for now let's just do that. Alright, so most of your lateral design is going to take place in the roll section. You can use uh, lateral g-force but it's not quite as easy or useful uh, mostly because with lateral g-force you run into the issue of uh, small lateral forces being somewhat painful uh, so even two g's of lateral force can be really really painful for riders so for modern steel coaster it's a good idea to stick to stick with roll if you're doing something like a wooden coaster you're gonna have a lot uh, a lot more lateral g forces than you would on say a brand new uh, Mac launch coaster as this one is basically going to be so for the roll there are two modes that you can put your roll into for this one of them is absolute and the other is relative now the difference between them is that the absolute roll that is the exact degree value that your track is going to be banking at, at a certain time so if we look here at one second after it enters this element it's going to bank left at a 50 degree angle and that will take and with how this works that will hit 50 and then go down again so let's say we want to do kind of like a weird twisty turny drop we can set another roll point here and maybe a little farther down but we can set another roll point here and that will result in kind of a left to right thing but the roll controls that fully which is nice now stay in, uh, say we use absolute roll or we use relative roll instead this is how many degrees it's going to turn within that time period so if you want the train to start turning for a corkscrew type thing at a certain point you can set it in the program to do that it's actually pretty neat if you can get it to work right nicely so say so at one second it's set to 50 degrees per second so that means at every second after that it will turn 50 degrees so down here will be 100 degrees and so on and so forth now if we want to set that to kind of like a full drop type thing we can do something like this and using the roll and the vertical axes you can create all sorts of really neat elements like this so you got a really cool swooping drop type thing and again you can adjust how long your element will go for and also uh, basically say at a certain point you want it to stop turning you can always level it out at any time so that's a pretty nice swooping drop there now let's look back at the vertical G's we're still within the limits um, around 3 G's which is pretty pretty decent and there you go nice swooping drop so hit create and you've got a really nice super drop now say you want to edit that a little bit what you're gonna do is you're going to undo that but the nice thing is that force vector designer will keep that for you so say you want it to be a little flatter which actually I think we do want it to be so you can level that off a little bit more and it looks really nice now here's another thing worth noting you can't go back to the force vector designer of a previous section so say I wanted to edit this I would have to basically undo all of these now you can do that but it's it takes a lot of time there's no guarantee that your settings will keep and you can run into all sorts of problems where if you change something back there it will 
mess up a speed point up here and you'll get all sorts of nasty crap that you didn't want. So let's, let's see if we can smooth that out a little bit. Okay. Now, you don't have to choose relative roll for the entire coaster. You can do it on a section by section basis. So, if I create this, I, if I create this section and I want the next section to be absolute, you should be able to do that. So, I put that back into absolute and there you go. So, say I want to kind of like do a wing over. Um, we're going to go back to relative roll. You'll you'll find the more you play around with these, the more comfortable you'll be using them. And that's basically how you get familiar with this. Uh, just play around as much as you want. Alright, so. I'm going to do kind of like a corkscrew over type thing. And look at that. So you get a nice, uh, you can do a really nice corkscrew, as is shown here. and it's nice and even and I guarantee you you're not going to be able to get something that smooth using the built-in corkscrew feature um, it's just not gonna happen but I do think we're going to open that up a little bit yeah the more you play with this the more comfortable you'll get Also, with this method, you can be sure that you're not putting a ton of stress on the riders unless you specifically want to for some reason. There we go. And it may look like what I'm doing right now is pretty complicated, but as you get more familiar with how the force vector designer works, you will kind of know what's going on here. So. So you see this orange point right here, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to adjust the level of rotation, or the amount of roll that it's doing per second, just to open that up a little bit and make sure it's not quite as tight. And you can even, uh, you can even mess around with this some more by putting in the absolute. and you'll get all sorts of fun shapes but yeah so there's a lot you can do with this um, especially if you have the time to mess around with it and work out kind of what your coaster style will allow you to do but also what types of elements you'd like to see from your coaster so and say instead of doing doing like a uh, instead of doing a torture I want to do like kind of like an overbank turn here which is what I have here now if I create that you'll see that it's well within the G forces that are acceptable for the train and actually looks pretty nice as well so uh, using roll you'll find that that's basically where you get the most use out of the program like you can do you can do vertical turns fairly well with just the old method of putting vertexes and um, working with that but for complex turns where you're doing any sort of helix or advanced corkscrew that you can't just modify the inbuilt one this is re where this program really shines and especially for elements that you're not entirely sure what you want to do with but once you'll see it you'll know which is basically how I've come to design all of my coasters now so, so we want to uh, we want after that element we want it to go back up because we don't want it burrowing way underground uh, set the for this we might actually be able to use absolute roll and get something a bit nicer yeah so 
As you can see here, absolute rule is helpful because we want it to be exactly zero at that point. And with this, you can get pretty close to that and actually it'll look nicer as well. So I think we want to actually drop it down a little bit more first. Alright, so as you can see, you can do a lot with this. Um, especially especially using the roll mode or especially using the roll axes to your advantage because that's har something that's really hard to do on your own in the program but once you use this add-on it becomes really nice so let's add another element oh, wrong one, another force vector so say we want to do type of some kind of like a corkscrew thing. Let's go back into relative. And one other thing, uh, you'll notice that at the connections between the different sections, you'll often get kind of like a uh, a bad connection where it'll be kind of disjointed um, at the start of every let me see if I can find a start but at the start here we go at the start of every section there is a roll node mixed with a uh, locked or a static node that will kind of be the bane of your existence if you use this because you have to go in there and depump if you're doing anything really crazy um, for that, it's not really that evident, but if you're doing some kind of crazy loopy thing and your boundary just happens to be in the middle of your section, then you run into the issue of basically the flow there gets cut off and looks really bad when you're on ride. Now, that's not as big of a problem as it would be if you were to do this all by hand and depump it, but it's still something to look out for. Uh, especially if you're going to use this as I do for most of your coaster track you'll find that the sections where your uh, the sections where your the the places where your sections combine is where you have a lot of your difficulties where you get like a really rough translation between sections so let's create that I actually like that a lot that he looks there and you'll notice no problems whatsoever with the forces on these tracks and that's the main thing because if you're designing these coasters using the traditional method you don't really have that much control over it and also uh, you'll get a lot of spikes when you place a vertex just in the wrong place with this it's all smooth it's all basically put there for you and it's also a lot more similar to how it's actually done as I was saying so let's Let's try to make this kind of a short coaster just so this video doesn't drag on longer than it is already. So let's head back over Station Way. And we're going to keep using Relative Roll for this one because I find it's actually working quite well here. Actually, I guess we could use Absolute. There we go. There we go. So. You'll notice that the train basically whips over perfectly, uh, and you can basically use the roll node in association with your vertical axes control to get a nice, nice bank over. And as you'll see here, there's a little bit of a kink in the track, which that can be smoothed over. That can be smoothed over later, but actually it's better idea just to fix it now so what we need to do to fix that is kinda change that alright so oh, that actually looks really nice um, so yeah and you'll notice here that the lateral force is acceptable limits as well and that's usually a big issue if you're trying to create some funky elements that don't really follow the rules of what would normally con be considered a normal coaster element. So, let's actually freeze this, see what it looks like in real life. 
maybe even test it out just to get an idea. Yeah, so this this construction technique is what I use mostly for my con for my construction now, and I find I like it a lot. Now I know a lot of people were predisposed to like other editors because the old the old No Limits had the issue where it would not be the easiest to place nodes by hand, so a lot of people got experience with that method. Oh, hold on. Screwed something up. Wrong type of track. Anyway. Um, a lot of people got ex a lot of experience with uh, Force Vector Designer++, plus plus, which was a popular one, and Newton2. I actually have Newton2, but I don't use it at all because I taught myself on this. Uh, that track's what I'm looking for. Station. There we go. Okay. So we're just going to freeze this real quick and check what it looks like, and you'll see why I really like this coaster stuff this method of construction gotta bring up the control panel to do this by hand alright here we go Alright, so uh, that concludes this tutorial. Uh, just one final thing though, you will notice that there are kind of a few rough sections in the track. There's one of them. Uh, let me see if I can find another. But these sections, as I mentioned earlier, are where the... Uh, that's kind of one as well. These sections are where the splits between the different... Okay, yeah, so there's one, and... Yeah, there's another one which kind of has the same issue. These splits are where the force vector designer sections end, and you'll normally have to go back in there and adjust by hand and smooth things over a little bit. But overall, it's not that much more work, uh, especially when you're considering doing any of these elements by hand and making them look nice. It would take a long time, and they would probably still not really have that great of a output. So... Uh, again, thank you for watching, and expect more tutorials in the future on other things. Uh, the next video I'm planning on doing is a scenery tutorial, so if you have any interest in scenery, uh, l please look forward to that. Uh, thank you very much.